Hey, how's it going guys? Phil here, and this is a review for the Alxum Dual M.2 SSD enclosure. A big thank you goes out to Alxum for sending me this unit to test. If you want one for yourself, be sure to use my exclusive discount code in the description below to save some money. You'll receive the drive enclosure, AC adapter, two aluminum heat sinks and silicone thermo pads, one 13-inch USB-C to USB-A and USB-C cable, an extra pair of rubber drive locks, and an instruction manual. This is the enclosure. It measures about 3 inches by 5.5 and inches and 3 quarter inches thick. The unit weighs about 6 ounces. The body is made from a lightweight aluminum, and it has a matte brushed metal dark gray finish all around. On top is the logo, and towards the bottom are the status LEDs. Along the bottom face are the one-touch offline cloning button, USB-C power and data port, and AC power port. On the other side, you'll find an airflow vent and the locking tab for the drive bay. To open the unit, slide the tap to the unlock position, then push in on the bottom face and it will eject slightly, allowing you to remove the bay. The drive bay is made of plastic, and it can accommodate two M.2 form factor SSDs. These bays are labeled A and B. These are flexible rubber drive locks, and the way they work is you gently pull them back when installing the drive, then release them, and they'll snap back and lock onto the drive to hold them in place. There are two other holes in each bay, so you can move the drive lock to suit the size of the M.2 card you are using. Just pull firmly on the rubber lock, and it should pop out. Then press it into another position for the size card you have. For example, the middle hole is for 60mm length drives. The shortest size is 42mm and the longest is for 80 millimeters, which is the most common size. You can install different sized drives in the bays simultaneously without a problem. Here are the SSDs that I will be installing in the unit. This is the WD Black SN850 NVMe 500GB SSD, and this is the Intel 660p NVMe 1TB SSD. First, I'm going to install the thermopads and heatsinks on both of these drives. Simply remove the plastic film on one side of the thermopad. Then press the adhesive side firmly onto the top of the drive. When applying the thermopad, be sure to only cover the chips on top, and not the screw hole on the end nor the gold contacts at the other end. Remove the remaining plastic film on top of the thermopad. Then peel the blue film off one side of the aluminum heatsink. Line it up over the thermopad and press down firmly. Then remove the blue film on top. You can see that adding the thermopad and heatsink doesn't add a lot of thickness to the drive. When installing the drives, make sure the M key is on the right hand side. Then insert the drive into the connector at an angle, about 20 degrees. It should look like this. Use your finger to pull the drive lock away from the drive, while pushing the drive down flat with your other hand. Then release the rubber drive lock and it should snap into place and hold the drive down. If you have two drives, do the same on the other side. Keep in mind that if you plan on cloning the drives, be sure to install the source drive in slot A, the drive you're copying from, and the destination drive in slot B, the drive you're copying to. The drive bay only goes into the enclosure one way, so make sure to insert it into the aluminum housing arrow side first. Once clicked into the housing, slide the tab to lock it to prevent accidental ejection. Now just plug in the AC adapter and connect the unit to your computer using one of the included cables. The enclosure power LED will illuminate green when the unit is on. When connecting to a USB-C or USB-A port, data transfer speeds may be impacted depending on whether or not the port you're using is USB 3.2 Gen 1, Gen 2, or Gen 2x2. On my computer, I have Gen 2 ports. I benchmarked the transfer speeds on the drive using Crystal Disk Mark, and I found that for both drives, I was able to achieve around 1000 megabytes per second read and write speeds. Despite one of the drives being PCIe Gen 3x4 and the other being PCIe Gen 4x4, and that's because the speeds are limited by the USB port's 10 gigabits per second max speed. That's still plenty fast though, and copying a 4GB file from my internal NVMe to a drive in the Alxum housing took about 10 seconds at an average speed of 440 megabytes per second. Moving files in the other direction was about 50% faster. 
and transferring files between the drives was about 25% slower. When the drives are being accessed, the A or B lights will flash yellow to indicate operation of the associated drive. One thing to note is that during operation, while the unit is plugged in, the enclosure will be hot to the touch, generally between 125 to 130 degrees Fahrenheit, or about 50 to 52 degrees Celsius. While this is a perfectly fine operating temperature for an SSD, it is hot enough to burn you with prolonged contact, so be sure to set it in a spot that gets lots of ventilation, and that you won't accidentally bump into it. There's a cooling fan inside that runs constantly, and it's not very loud or noticeable at all. Although occasionally, the fan will buzz for 15 or so seconds upon startup, before operating normally. The last feature I'll talk about is the offline cloning functionality. This unit does not need to be connected to a computer for this, so you can disconnect the USB cable. Then just press and hold the cloning button for 3 seconds to copy the entire contents and structure of the drive in slot A to the drive in slot B. Note that the source drive in slot A must be equal in capacity or smaller than the destination drive. If drive B is smaller than A, the cloning procedure will not initiate. Also, remember to back up the destination drive if there's anything important on it, because the entire thing will be erased. When the enclosure is cloning a drive, the bottom four LEDs will flash, indicating how far along the process it is. For me, cloning my 500GB drive to the 1TB drive took over 6 hours, so I just let the unit run and do its thing overnight. When it finished, all four LEDs were a solid blue. After you connect the enclosure to your computer again, you'll need to re-enable the drive by right-clicking on the This PC icon and selecting Manage. Then select Disk Management on the left-hand side, or simply search for Disk Management in the Cortana search bar. Scroll down in the list of drives until you find the drive that is offline. Then right-click the disk and select Online. If your original drive was encrypted, for example with BitLocker, the clone drive will also be encrypted, and you'll see this gold lock icon on each drive. You'll have to provide a key in order to access either of the drive's contents. Note that since the two drives are identical, the key used to unlock them both will be the same. After you've unlocked the drives, then you can access the contents, and you can see here if I check the properties that they are the same. And when we look at the file contents of both drives, they're also the same. If you're wondering what happened to the rest of the capacity of the larger 1TB drive, since we only cloned over 500GB, it's simply unallocated, and it won't be accessible until you allocate it in disk management. Overall, this drive enclosure performed exactly as expected. It lets me access two M.2 NVMe SSDs at the same time, with decent read and write speeds, while also giving me the ability to clone one drive to the other without needing to connect it to a computer. I love that this enclosure is completely toolless, from opening and removing the drive bay to installing the drives. You don't need any screwdrivers, and there are no tiny screws to lose. While it's not compatible with SATA M.2 SSDs, and it does run a little hot to the touch, that's not a problem for drive performance, and even though the cloning process is slow, it eventually gets the job done. Most of the time, the fan is whisper quiet, except the odd occasion when the enclosure is starting up. I hope you enjoyed this review. You can ask me any questions in the comments. I'll put a link to the product in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and join me next time.